Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. I'm your host, Pretorius. This is part 18 of the 1743. Owen, oh, I like to muddle the waters, Benjamin. Oh, wait, I don't care how religious you are. It's really easy to fear death and to uh, just to feel like everything's pointless when you're in the vacuum, when you're like heliocentric. When you actually see that sun and that moon and that ground and that sky, you're like, oh my God, this is like an infinite plane. Like it just something clicks in you and you're like, because sometimes I still have fears with uh, death and, you know, I don't want the party to end and all that stuff, you know, that everybody just ages and dies and everyone, like, I'll look at my kids and be like, one day they'll be old, one day they'll die, which is mind blowing to me, but that's a fact. But then when you see the infinity of it, it feels a lot better. I remember you saying all you ever wanted was a son to wave at a neighbor's truck when it drives it. Yeah, like, dude, sometimes I really feel that we are actively manifesting our lives. Um, you know, like I've had <clears throat> him saying that. Me, it hits a whole lot different whenever you realize that this is the same guy that encourages people to pay the gay away. To they, He encourages people, everyone to admit that they are gay and that they need to pay him in order for it to go away dreams that just happen and i know you guys are doing the same thing it's like god's creation is infinitely more fascinating than the science of religion can ever make up yeah yeah like the science is sub- and let's not forget that he what he's saying right now like you can manifest it into reality that's the same thing as the secret which he's mentioned before and the and has denounced before but it just happened to be if it had to, it happened to fall in line with whatever he whatever gospel he was preaching at the moment but right now he's preaching the gospel of the secret, the one that Oprah Win- Winfrey uh, at least pushed for a little bit. Like it's intentionally misguiding you in denialism. I don't always feel that security and that faith uh, that I do a lot. Like sometimes I don't. Sometimes I feel like scared to death that it's just the lights are out, everything is gone, and everything's meaningless and pointless. Like I do have those feelings sometimes, but it's pretty rare. And before, when I used to be like really into the science narrative, it was always, I always felt like that. I always had that feeling of like nothing really mattered. But when you actually fucking see that we are in a closed loop, there is no way to to not feel deeply grateful and inspired. And that there is a plan and there is no black pill, you know? Collective soul, aka the sun, for the good, true, and beautiful. Thanks, True Bear. Yeah, it's like, uh, the, yeah, the sun. It's like, that's why you're not supposed to look directly at the sun. I mean, the Bible is describing, you know, the purifying fire of God. It feels a lot like the sun. When everything revolves around you and not vice versa, you feel like it's all built for you. Yeah, exactly. So he is towing with you the the the, uh, the philosophy or whatever you want to call it of the sun being God from what he just said. The scripture about the all-consuming fire and all that kind of stuff really does seem like it's talking about the sun. That's what he just said. (coughs) Going with the thought of sun worship. And that you have a purpose here and that it's, it's infinite. Like the stars and the sun are never going anywhere. Like you can feel that. Like I used to be, I used to have nightmares when I was a kid that the sun was going to go out. Because I'd watch these nature movies that were like, in 20 billion years, the sun will have gone out and all life will have been turned to dust. And I'm just like, no, no. Because even though I was okay with my own death, I was like, so our, our, like, what we create will all be for nothing. He's talking about himself being a child. And he said, even though I was okay with my own death. And I used to literally have nightmares about that when I was like five. I was like eight years old, just like thinking. So he was five or eight years old. He was already comfortable with his own death, but he was worried about the universe, the, the, uh, at least this solar system with the sun going out. The sun turning off and everything going black and becoming cold. It's not, there's no evidence whatsoever that that is real. I look at the sun, but at the start and end of the day, not lunchtime like Rebecca Bear. Where the fuck is Rebecca Bear? I'll see her like in comments. I know she's around, but it's I miss Rebecca Bear. I'm so happy for her being a mom, but uh, man, I used to love having Rebecca Bear in the chat more. I always tell everyone to have families, and then they fucking leave. Okay. Dear Owen, I haven't written you since last year after losing my dad. Thank you for the... Here's another, here's another point. <clears throat> he claims that before he came along, there was nobody pushing for families. Now... You can you know that that's a lie. 
for for a couple of reasons, but for one main reason, back in the uh, 90s and early 2000s, there was one long running joke in almost any movie that you could pick a random movie and they'll say something about the nuclear household 2.4 children because that's what was expected you to get married and you to have kids. Owen didn't originate anything. Direct quote from Owen, I helped create 10,000 plus or tens of thousands of white babies and that deserves some GD respect. He said that unironically, he was dead serious whenever he said that. I love what eulogy you played. It really meant a lot to me and I really appreciate it and all the time you spend bringing us together here in Bertaria. <laughs> My husband asked if I wanted to go watch the Sound of Freedom movie. I said, no thanks, that movie is just to scare parents into chipping their kids. He replied, it's to spread awareness. I said, who's not aware of human trafficking and when has spreading awareness changed anything? Yeah, and there's child actors in the movie, which is traumatic for those kids. You know, they're real people. Those kids playing the role of a sex victim. Like, oh, they don't have cancer and billions of dollars for years. What's as Hollywood is evil. I've learned, you know, they're like adult people. They're just like, totally, and it's not because their hairstyle. Look at, look, not to be whatever, but just look at how their body is structured. Nine year old. Man. This letter. I love how she pointed out that and see these mysteries. Why did a whole, I mean, I'm at two and a half hours now, so I'll just do that stream on Monday. It's all about the age of consent, the age of maturity. Um, I, uh, yeah, yeah, dude, Gematria is so wild. The Vivian Kubrick on, Rumble is at 33,600. Of course it is. That's hilarious. Okay, so him talking about the age of consent. He has already said multiple times that there's no difference between a 14 and 15-year-old girl, teenager, and a 35-year-old woman. Uh, I, I'm not going to start that topic right now. I know I started talking about that in the beginning, but when people go through puberty, what's the role of marriage? What is... The, the history of uh, the legalities of that. Because after doing that stream with the Muslim, of course, you get all the churchians like, oh, what are you asking about Mohammed and a nine-year-old? It's like, so I started tweeting. Should I just talk about it? Are you guys in the mood for a longer stream today? <laughs> because it is super fucking interesting. Uh, superb. Hi, Big Bear, man. Please be verified as Superb Bear. Yeah, of course. Welcome. It is super interesting. Because this is what high school kids looked like in the 80s. Check this out. They clearly looked more like adults. All right. So these are high school uh, students. You know? And I asked Twitter why it looks like people have... Um, these are like 15-year-olds, guys. <clears throat> yeah, this dude's he, he really is just kind of stupid, though. And one of the reasons... Do you know why they look a little bit older? It's because the way that you think about um, how, how would you describe that? Because you know how children look today, and so I don't I, I don't know how to explain that. They still look like high school kids. Just the style has changed. And so that style is attributed to older people because we knew older people that dressed like that, right? Because these people got older. And so in our head, that is attributed to people that are older. We don't know any adults that dress as kids do today. And so they look significantly younger. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's, I mean, that's the, that's the best I've got right now. You know, they're like adult people. They're just like, and it's not because their hairstyle. Look at, look, not to be whatever, but just look at how their body is structured. They just look like fucking adults. And the males look, uh, they're just bigger, broader, you know? 30 year old guys are all bald. <laughs> look at that guy. You know? It's, uh, it's really. They look like children. They look like high school kids. They do. Interesting. And so I asked Twitter, let me find that tweet. Because I'm interested in a lot of shit. Like, I don't tweet. I never tweet for an agenda. I never am, like, trying to prove something to somebody. I actually want to know shit. Um, and and rural rural kids are always bigger, too, than city kids. Tron Drew Bear was talking to me about that. So let me just review this real quick. 
Because, you know, it's just so annoying when everybody tries to discredit everybody when they're like, oh, well, what about Muhammad? I'm like, dude, the, the, I'll just read what I wrote. Uh, where is it? Spoiler alert. He's going to say, well, that's just the way it was back then. There is a house built out of stone. Someone said, what are your thoughts on Muhammad and Aisha? For one, I don't really have any thoughts because I don't know. I, from what I've heard, um, it doesn't even say in the Quran the age of Aisha, but I've heard that she was nine and that he had wives ranging from like nine to 50. I don't want to, I don't know. Like I'm not an Islamic scholar, but, um, and that he was married to her for like 60 years or some shit. I literally don't fully know, but it's not shocking if you know our history and the history of Christianity and the history of the West. And, uh, and then I went to this park where the guy that the park was named after went, fought in a war when he was 11. And so these things, all right, so I wrote, from, from my modern perspective, it seems insane. Like right now, like an eight-year-old is so young. Like they're just crazy. Like that looks like pedophilia, right? Uh, but if you look back even three, four. <laughs> no, <clears throat> no, <laughs> no, no. The answer to this is absolutely no. Absolutely no. 100% no. Everybody say it with me. No. He said eight years old looks like pedophilia, but that's a no. That is a, uh, <laughs> that is an astounding no to that. Oh my. Wow. He said it. I wrote from, from my modern perspective, it seems insane. Like right now, like an eight year old, is so young. Like, they're just crazy. Like, that looks like pedophilia, right? Uh, what? <sighs> but if you look back even three, four generations, well, eight is still, like, I have a hard time with eight no matter what, unless it's post-puberty or if they were betrothed. Like, back in the day, you would marry off all your kids. What in the... What? He is, he's, he is, it's like he's a beacon for. <clears throat> this. Or else people would literally starve to death. It was like a, an act of charity. But like, I can't imagine a world where, I've, unless people got mature really quickly back then, which I don't, I, that's what I've been thinking about. Because an eight-year-old, like, pre-puberty is pedophilia no matter what. There's no excuse for it um, at all. Like, you should be killed if you do that. Like, there's like having any sexual relations whatsoever. See, it's a, it's a strange thing to hear him say that after he said what he said earlier. Him saying, eight-year-old, eight, what are, all right, let's just let him. They're just crazy. Like, that looks like pedophilia, right? Uh, but if you look back even three, four generations, well, eight is still, like, I have a hard time with eight no matter what, unless it's post-puberty or if they were betrothed. Like, back in the day, you would marry off all your kids or else people would literally starve to death. It was like a ch an act of charity. But, like, I can't imagine a world where, I've, unless people got mature really quickly back then, which I don't, I, that's what I've been thinking about. Because an eight-year-old, like, pre-puberty is pedophilia no matter what. There's no excuse for it. Um at all like you should be killed if you do that like there's like having any sexual relations whatsoever with a prepubescent even if you're married and you're agrarian or anything like you should be shot you know but post puberty he, he doesn't believe that did you hear how he's well i don't know he might just be um i don't know the way he said shot was less uh had less to it, less, less substance to it than the rest of it. But if you're listening to what he's saying, it's almost as though he's making an argument for that it's okay directly after puberty. Which, if you're looking at the definitions, that's what that's what a PDF computer file is, is that of somebody that ha is prepubescent. And so there's another word for it that just gets uh, entangled in that that meaning. But it's almost sounding as though that he, well, I mean, it's not sounding as though I think he really is trying to make the argument that uh, because he, he, if you listen, if you remember him actually saying there's no difference between a 14 and a 15 year old 
and a 35 year old. So he is making the argument that it, that that is okay. That's our history, and, and whether or not you want to admit it, that's literally what it is. If you look at our history, the age of consent in America to marry, because there was no age of consent to fuck, that was illegal. It's called fornication. A lot of people don't realize that, that there was no age of consent. If you had sex outside of wedlock, it was a crime. Until the 20th century, guys. The age of consent to marry in America was seven in many states. The highest was 12. No, not in many states. It was one state, seven in Delaware. All you have to do is just look it. Look that up. It took me less than five minutes to find multiple sources that said one state, seven, multiple states, 10, and then a lot of them were 12. And I think the majority of them changed to 12 around the 1900s. Most was seven. It was between seven and 12 until 1900 and consummation <laughs> at puberty. So you could marry somebody when they're seven and you could consummate the marriage after they quote unquote bled. I know this is going to make people uncomfortable, but this is our history. And it actually lines up quite well with uh, uh, farming goats. I hate to sound cold, but um, anyway, that's but it, that's why it's I, I'm still. A- he said that that lines up well with farming goats. Against having children very young, because I think it's uh, it, it, I think it's why there was a lot of death and childbirth. I've thought a lot. <clears throat> This is the Texas Goat Radio Show, and I'm your host, Pretorius. As always, till next time.